God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God made a firmament in the midst of the waters and divided the waters from the waters. The waters under the firmament were gathered together to one place in God called the land earth. God created lights in the heavens to divide the day from the night and to give light upon the earth. God created two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and saw that it was good. God created great whales, every living creature that moveth, and every winged fowl after its kind, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. 26 And God made man in his image, after his likeness. He gave him dominion over all living things. God created man in his own image, male and female created he them, and blessed them, saying be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. God said he would give every herb bearing seed and every tree yielding fruit to mankind for meat, and it was so. God saw everything he had made, and it was very good. The heavens and the earth were finished, and God rested on the seventh day. The Lord God created the heavens and the earth, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and made every tree pleasant to the sight and good for food. A river went out of Eden to water the garden, and was parted into four heads, Pison, Gian, Hittical, and Euphrates. The Lord God took the man into the Garden of Eden and commanded him to eat of every tree therein, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, from which he would surely die. Adam gave names to all cattle, birds and beasts of the field, but the Lord God did not find and help meat for Adam. The Lord God caused Adam to sleep, and took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. He made a woman, and brought her to Adam, and they became one flesh. The serpent said to the woman that she may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but that she must not eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, lest she die. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and would make one wise. The Lord God called Adam and asked him where he was. Adam said he was afraid because he was naked and hid himself, but later he admitted eating of the tree. The Lord God cursed the serpent and put enmity between him and the woman, and said she would bring forth children in sorrow and her desire would be to her husband. Adam was cursed because he had eaten of the tree, and was told to eat only herb of the field and return to the ground after eating. Adam and Eve were clothed by the Lord God, and he sent Adam out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground. Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and again bare Abel, who was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was very wroth because the Lord had not respected his offering, and the Lord said to him, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Cain was cursed by the Lord because he killed his brother Abel. The earth would not yield to him any more strength and he would be a fugitive and a vagabond. Cain was driven out from the face of the earth and would be a fugitive and a vagabond. God created man in the likeness of God, blessed them, and named them Adam. They had a son named Seth and a son named Enos. Adam lived in hundred and thirty years, begot a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called him Seth. Seth lived in hundred and five years, begot Enos, who lived eight hundred and seven years, and begot sons and daughters. Mahalaleel lived sixty and five years, begot Jared, lived eight hundred and thirty years, begot Enoch, lived sixty and five years, begot Methuselah, lived eight hundred years, begot sons and daughters, lived nine hundred sixty and two years, and died. Lamech lived five hundred ninety-five years after he begot Noah, and begot sons and daughters. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God took them wives of all which they chose. The Lord said he would destroy man from the face of the earth, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the earth was corrupt before God. 
Make an arc of gopher wood, pitch it within and without with pitch, and make a window to the ark and set a door in the side thereof. Noah, his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives with him went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. The Lord said that he would cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights and destroy every living substance that he had made. After seven days, the waters of the flood were upon the earth, and Noah, his sons, and his wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, went into the ark with all the animals and every bird of every sort. The flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased greatly upon the earth. All flesh that moved upon the earth died, including fowl, cattle, beasts, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man. The waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark and sent forth a raven and a dove to see if the waters were dried up from off the earth. The dove found no rest for her sole of her foot and returned to Noah. Noah and his family were told to go out of the ark because the earth was dry. God told them to bring every living thing they had with them so they could breed abundantly and multiply on the earth. Noah, his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives with him went forth and offered burnt offerings to the Lord. The Lord smelled a sweet savor and said he would not curse the ground again for man's sake. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. God blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. God established a covenant with Noah and his sons, and with every living creature that was with them, saying that all flesh would no longer be cut off by a flood. God said that he would set his bow in the cloud as a token of a covenant between himself and the earth, so that he would remember the covenant and not let the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. Noah started a vineyard, drank some wine, and was naked in his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, told his two brethren without, and Shem and Japheth covered their father's nakedness, and Noah awoke from his wine and cursed Canaan. Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord, and built Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Asher built Nineveh, Rehoboth, and Kala, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala. After the destruction of Mizraim, Ludim, Anamim, Lehabim, Naphtuhim, Pethrusim, Kasluim, and Kaphtarim, the Canaanites were spread abroad. Shem had several children, including Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. Aram had several children, including Uzi, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Joktan begot Almadad, Shalef, Hazarmaveth, and Jera, Hadarim, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. When the children of men built a city and a tower, the Lord came down and confounded their language, so they could not understand one another's speech. Shem was an hundred years old when he begot Arphaxad, and he lived five hundred years after he begot Arphaxad, and he begot sons and daughters. Arphaxad lived five and thirty years after he begot Sulla, and he lived four hundred and three years after he begot Sulla, and he begot sons and daughters. Nahor and Tur had sons and daughters, and Tur's son Abram had a son named Lot, and Nahor's son Haran had a son named Lot. Abram and Nahor took wives, but Sarai was barren and had no child. Tur took Abram, Lot and Sarai from Uar of the Chaldees and went to Haran to live. Tur lived two hundred and five years and died in Haran. The Lord told Abram to get out of his country and follow him to a land that would bless him and make his name great. The Lord appeared to Abram and told him that he would give this land to his seed. Abram built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. When the Egyptians saw Sarai, they said, This is his wife, and they would kill him, but they would save her alive. Abram's wife Sarai was very fair to the Egyptians, and she was taken into Pharaoh's house. The Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house because of Sarai Abram's wife. Abram was called by Pharaoh and told that he should take Sarah as his wife. 
Abram was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold, and went to Bethel to the place where he had made an altar at the beginning. Abram told Lot to separate himself from him and his herdmen, and to take either the left or the right hand. Abram and Lot lived in the land of Canaan, but the Lord said to Abram to look northward, southward, eastward, and westward, and to walk through the land, for he would give it to him and his seed forever. In the thirteenth year of Keterlamer's reign, Amraphel, Ariok, Keterlamer, and Tidal rebelled against Bera, Bersha, Shernab, Adma, Shemeber, and the king of Bela, which is Zor. Keterlamer and the kings that were with him smote the Rephames, Susims, Eames, and Horites, and then returned to Enmishpat and smote the Amalekites and Amorites. The kings of Sodom, Gomorra, Adma, Zeboim, Bela, and Keterlamer joined battle with the kings of Elam, Tidal, Amraphel, Shinar, and Arioch in the Vale of Sidim. The kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled to the mountain, and took all their goods, and went their way. Abram armed his trained servants and pursued the robbers to Dan, smote them and pursued them to Hobah, where he brought back all the goods and his brother Lot. Melchizedek, king of Salem, blessed Abram and gave him tithes of all. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to yourself. Abram said to the king of Sodom that he would not take anything from him, except what the young men had eaten and the portion of the men who went with him. After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. He said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? He divided a heifer, a she-goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon, but did not divide the birds. Abram was sleeping when an horror of great darkness fell upon him. The horror was a warning that his seed would be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and would serve them for four hundred years. The Lord made a covenant with Abram and gave him this land, including the Canaanites, Kenizzites, Cadmonites, Perizzites, Rephames, Amorites, and Canaanites. Sarai Abram's wife gave her maid Hagar to her husband Abram to be his wife, and she conceived. When she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. The angel of the Lord found Hagar by a fountain of water in the wilderness, and told her to return to her mistress Sarai and submit herself under her hands. He also told her she would bear a son and call him Ishmael. Abram was ninety years old and nine when the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant with thee, and multiply thee exceedingly, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. God said to Abraham to circumcise every man-child in his generation, including those born in the house or bought with money of a stranger, which is not of his seed. A child must be circumcised to be accepted into the family. An uncircumcised child will be cut off from his people. God told Abraham to rename his wife Sarah and to give her a son. She would be a mother of nations. Abraham laughed and said that he wished Ishmael would live before God. God said that Sarah would bear him a son and that he would be called Isaac. God blessed Ishmael and would make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly, but his covenant would be with Isaac. Abraham circumcised himself and Ishmael his son in the flesh of their foreskin on the same day, as God had said to him. All the men of Abraham's house were also circumcised on the same day. Abraham was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day when three men stood by him. He ran to meet them and bowed himself toward the ground and asked the Lord to let him fetch them some water, rest their feet under a tree, and comfort their hearts. He said he would return to Sarah according to the time of his life, and Sarah would have a son. Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and Sarah laughed within herself, but the Lord said she would have a son at the time appointed, and Sarah denied laughing. The men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. The Lord said he would not hide anything from Abraham. The Lord said he would go down and see if Sodom and Gomorrah had done all they should have, and if not he would know. Abraham stood before the Lord and said he would not slay the righteous with the wicked. 
Abraham spoke to the Lord and said that if he found forty and five righteous people in the city, he would not destroy it. If he found thirty, he would not destroy it. Lot saw two angels come to Sodom and bowed himself with his face toward the ground. He pleaded with them to stay the night and wash their feet so they could rise up early and go on their ways. Lot pressed upon the men greatly, and they entered into his house, but before they lay down, the men of the city compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, and called unto Lot, and said, Where are the men which came into thee this night? The men told Lot to bring his son-in-law, sons, and daughters out of the city, because they were going to destroy it. The angels hastened Lot to take his wife and two daughters, lest he be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Lot was told to escape for his life, but he could not escape to the mountain, because he had found grace in the sight of the Lord and he could not afford to die. Therefore, the city was named Zor. Lot entered into Zor when the sun was rising. The Lord rained brimstone and fire from heaven upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and overthrew those cities, the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. The firstborn said to the younger that they should make their father drink wine and lie with him to preserve seed for their father. Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and lived in Gerar. Abimelech king of Gerar sent for Sarah, but God came to him in a dream and told him he was a dead man for taking a man's wife. Abraham said he did this because he thought the fear of God was not in this place, and they would slay him for his wife's sake. Sarah was reproved when Abimelech said her brother was worth a thousand pieces of silver. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian mocking Abraham, and told Abraham to cast out the woman and her son. But God said to Abraham to listen to Sarah, and that in Isaac his seed would be called. Abraham sent Hagar away with bread and a bottle of water, and she wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba with the child. She sat down over against him and wept. God heard the voice of the lad and called to Hagar, who lifted up the lad and gave him water. God would make him a great nation. Abraham was asked to swear by God that he would not deal falsely with Abimelech, his son, or his son's son. Abraham reproved Abimelech because his servants had violently taken away a well of water. Abraham gave sheep and oxen to Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. Abraham set seven new lambs by themselves, and Abimelech said that they would be a witness to him that he had dug a well. God tempts Abraham and tells him to take his son Isaac to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering. Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and went to the place of which God had told him. Isaac asked his father where the lamb for a burnt offering was, and his father said that God would provide himself a lamb. Abraham built an altar, laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, and took the knife to slay him. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham and said to not touch his son, because he knew that Abraham feared God. The angel of the Lord called Abraham out of heaven the second time, and promised to bless him and multiply his seed, and he would possess the gate of his enemies. After these things, Abraham was told that Milcah had also borne children to his brother Nahor, including Huz, Buzz, Kemuel, Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel begot Rebekah, and Milcah born eight more children to Nahor, Abraham's brother. Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Hate, who gave him a possession of a burying place with them so that he could bury his dead out of his sight. Abraham stood up, bowed himself to the people of the land, and communed with them, asking them to bury their dead out of his sight. Ephron the son of Zohar gave him the cave of Machpelah. Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Hate, saying, Give me the field and the cave that is therein, and bury thy dad. Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land and spoke to Ephron in the audience of the people of the land. Ephron answered Abraham and said the land was worth four hundred shekels of silver. 
Abraham was given the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, as a possession in the presence of the children of hate. Abraham's eldest servant was told to put his hand under his thigh and swear by the Lord not to take a wife for his son Isaac from the daughters of the Canaanites. The Lord God of heaven sent his angel before Moses to find a wife for his son. If the woman would not follow Moses, he would be clear from his oath. The servant went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahar, and made his camels kneel down by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. He prayed to the Lord God of his master Abraham to show kindness to his master. Rebekah came out with her pitcher upon her shoulder, and the servant ran to meet her and ask for a drink. She then went and drew water for all his camels, and the man wondered whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. The man took a golden earring and two bracelets from the damsel and asked her if she had room in her father's house for him and his camels. The damsel said she did and the man worshipped the Lord and told them about her mother's house. When Abraham saw his sister's earring and bracelets, he went to the man and asked him why he stood by the camels at the well. The man said that the Lord had blessed his master greatly and that he had given him flocks, herds, silver, gold, men servants, maid servants, and camels. My master made me swear that I would not take a wife for his son from the daughters of the Canaanites, but I would go to my father's house and take a wife for my son from my kindred. If they gave me no wife, I would be clear from my oath. Rebecca came out with her pitcher on her shoulder, drew water, and gave it to Abraham, who bowed down and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of Abraham for leading him in the right way to take his brother's daughter. Abraham's servant worshipped the Lord when he heard Laban and Bethuel's words and gave Rebekah, her brother and her mother precious things. They ate and drank together and tarried all night before Abraham sent them away to his master. He said to them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, send me away that I may go to my master, and they sent away Rebekah their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. Isaac came from the way of the well Lahiroi, and went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. Rebekah saw Isaac, and lighted off the camel, and took a veil, and covered herself, and became Isaac's wife. Abraham took a wife named Keturah, and she bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan and Dedan were the children of Keturah. Abraham lived in hundred threescore and fifteen years, and was buried in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre. His son Isaac dwelt by the well Lahiroi. Ishmael, Abraham's son, had twelve sons, named Nebajoth, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadar, Tima, Jatur, Naphish, and Kadima. Ishmael lived in hundred and thirty and seven years and gave up the ghost, and was gathered unto his people. Isaac, Abraham's son, had twins with Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Esau was faint and asked Jacob to feed him with red pottage, but Jacob said he could sell his birthright if he swore to him. Isaac went to Gerar and dwelt there, and the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you of, and that he would be blessed and that he would give all these countries to his seed. Abimelech called Isaac and said that his wife was his sister. Isaac said that he would die for her, but Abimelech charged all his people that they would surely put him to death. The man waxed great, went forward and grew until he became very great, and the Philistines envied him. The Philistines stopped the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and filled them with earth. Isaac's servants dug a well in the valley, and the herdmen of Gerar strove with Isaac's herdmen for it. The Lord appeared to Isaac the same night, and said, Fear not, I am with you, and will bless you, and multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Isaac asked the men why they came to him, and they said they saw the Lord was with him, so they swore an oath to him that they would do him no harm, and sent him away in peace. 
Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith the daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Bashamath the daughter of Elon the Hittite. Isaac called Esau his eldest son, and said, My son, behold, here I am. Rebekah heard Isaac speak to Esau his son, and told Jacob to fetch two good kids of the goats and bring them to his father so he could eat and bless him before his death. Jacob said to his mother that he would bring a curse upon himself if his father felt him as a deceiver. His mother told him to go fetch some savory meat for his father. Rebekah put the raiment of her eldest son Esau on her younger son Jacob, and put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth of his neck. She gave him the savory meat and the bread she had prepared. He discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him, and said, Let people serve you, and nations bow down to you, be lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to you. As soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, Esau his brother came in from his hunting, and brought savory meat to his father. Isaac trembled and asked who the man was, and when he heard the words of his father Esau cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. Esau asked his father for a blessing, and his father answered that he would have a dwelling in the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above, and would serve his brother. Now obey my voice, and flee to Laban my brother to Haran, and tarry with him a few days until your brother's fury turn away. Rebekah said to Isaac that she was weary of her life because of the daughters of hate, and Isaac told Jacob to take a wife from the daughters of Laban, his mother's brother. God Almighty blesses Abraham and gives him the blessing of inheriting the land that God gave to Abraham. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him, Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons, and saw that his countenance was not toward him as before. He sent Rachel and Leah to the field to tend his flock, and told them that God had taken away their father's cattle and given them to him. In a dream, Jacob saw that all the rams that leaped upon the cattle were ringstraked, speckled, and grizzled. The angel of God told Jacob to get out of this land and return to the land of his kindred. Rachel and Leah asked Isaac if they could have anything from their father's house. Isaac said they could have anything God told them to have. Jacob rose up and took his sons and wives on camels to go to Isaac's father in the land of Canaan. Rachel had stolen her father's images. Jacob fled with all that he had from Laban the Syrian, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. Laban pursued him seven days' journey and overtook Jacob in the Mount Gilead. Jacob was afraid that Laban would take his daughters by force, so he stole his gods to keep them from him. But Laban didn't know that Rachel had stolen them. Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture, but Laban searched all the tent, but found no images. Jacob was angry with Laban and demanded to know his sin. Laban showed him his household stuff and Jacob's brothers judged between them. I have been with thee twenty years, and I have worked for thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, but the wages have changed ten times. God has rebuked thee for your wickedness. Laban said to Jacob, Come, let us make a covenant, and let it be for a witness between us. Jacob took a stone, set it up for a pillar, and then told his brethren to gather stones and make an heap. Laban called the heap Jagarsahadutha, but Jacob called it Gaild. Laban said to Jacob that he would not pass over a heap and a pillar to him, so Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Laban rose up, kissed his sons and daughters, and blessed them. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Jacob sent messengers to Esau to tell him that he had sojourned with Laban and had oxen, asses, flocks, men servants, and women servants. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed when the messengers told him that Esau was coming to meet him, so he divided the people and livestock into two bands. Jacob said to God that he was not worthy of all the mercies and truth that God had shown him, and that he feared his brother Esau would come and smite him and the mother with the children. Jacob sent a present to Esau, and instructed his servants to say, These are thy servant Jacob's, and behold, also he is behind us, when Esau asked them whose they were. 
He then saw Esau and appeased him with the present, and afterward he would see his face. Jacob was left alone and wrestled with a man until the breaking of the day. The man touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and said that his name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Jacob called the place Peniel, because he had seen God face to face, and his life was preserved. The children of Israel do not eat the sinew that shrank. Jacob divided the children between Leah, Rachel, and the two handmaids, and put Rachel and Joseph hindermost. He bowed himself to the ground seven times before Esau, who ran to meet him and kissed him. Esau said, I have enough, my brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. Jacob said, Nay, I pray you, take my blessing at my hand, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. He said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before thee. If men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Jacob pitched his tent before Shalem, a city of Shechem, and bought a field there. He erected an altar there and called it Elilo Israel. Shechem the son of Hammer the Hivite took Dinah the daughter of Jacob as a wife, and his soul clave unto the damsel. Jacob heard that his sons had defiled Dinah, and held his peace until they were come. Hammer the father of Shechem went out to Jacob to commune with him, and asked Jacob to give his daughter to his son Shechem. Shechem said to her father and brethren, Give me the damsel to wife, and I will give you whatever you say. The sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hammer his father deceitfully, and said that they would give their daughter to them if every male of them was circumcised, but if they didn't, they would take their daughter and be gone. Hammer and Shechem his son came to the gate of their city and communed with the men of their city, saying that they would let them dwell in the land and trade therein, if every male among them was circumcised. Two of Dinah's brethren came upon the city boldly and slew all the males, taking Dinah out of Shechem's house and going out. They spoiled the city and took all their wealth and little ones and their wives captive. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi that he would be destroyed if the Canaanites and Perizzites gathered together against him and slew him. God told Jacob to go up to Bethel and make an altar to God. Jacob said to his household to put away the strange gods and change their garments, and go up to Bethel to make an altar to God. Jacob hid all the strange gods and earrings in the oak by Shechem, and the terror of God was upon the cities around them. Jacob built an altar at Elbethel, where God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. God said to Abraham to be fruitful and multiply and give the land he was given to Abraham's seed. God talked with Jacob in the place where he set up a pillar and poured oil and drink offerings on it. Rachel had hard labor and gave birth to a son, whom she named Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the Tower of Eder, and Reuben went and lay with Bilhah his father's concubine. Israel heard it, and his twelve sons were born to him in Padanaram. Isaac's days were an hundred and fourscore years, and he died. His sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Esau took wives of the daughters of Canaan, and they bore him Eliphaz, Ruel, Jish, Jalam, and Korah. Esau took his wives, sons, daughters, cattle, and all his substance, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. He dwelt in Mount Seir and had eleven sons, including Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, and Kenas. The sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Kenas, Korah, Gadam, and Amalek. These were the sons of Ada. Esau the father of the Edomites had many dukes, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. Joseph, being seventeen years old, brought his father's wife's evil report, and Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Joseph dreamed that his sheaf arose and stood upright, and that his brethren's sheaves made obeisance to his sheaf. His brethren hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Joseph dreamed that the sun, the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to him. His father rebuked him, and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying, and sent Joseph to his brethren in Shechem to see if all was well with the flocks. Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. 
They conspired against him to slay him, but Reuben heard it and delivered him out of their hands, so that he could deliver him to his father again. Joseph was stripped of his coat and cast into a pit, where he was found by his brethren. They saw a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh. Reuben returned to the pit and found Joseph was not there. He rent his clothes and returned to his brethren, who killed a kid of goats, and dipped Joseph's coat in the blood and brought it to their father, who knew it was his son's coat. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren when he brought his father's wife's evil report to him. Israel loved Joseph more than all his children and made him a coat of many colors. Joseph dreamed that his sheaf arose and stood upright, and that his brethren's sheaves made obeisance to his sheaf. His brethren hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Joseph dreamed that the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars made obeisance to him. His father rebuked him, and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying, and sent Joseph to his brethren in Shechem to see if it was well with them and the flocks. Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. They conspired against him to slay him, but Reuben heard it and delivered him out of their hands, so he could deliver him to his father again. When Joseph was stripped of his coat, his brethren cast him into a pit. A company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Reuben returned to the pit and found Joseph missing, he rent his clothes and returned to his brethren who killed a kid of the goats and dipped Joseph's coat in the blood. Jacob knew it was his son's coat and wept for him many days. Judah took a daughter from a Canaanite, Shua, and went in with her. She conceived and bare a son, heir, and a daughter. Pharaoh dreamed that seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed came up out of the river, and seven other kine came up after them, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and ate up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke, and his spirit was troubled, and he called for all the magicians of Egypt. The chief butler was put in ward in the captain of the guard's house, and the chief baker dreamed a dream that was interpreted by a young man, in Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. Pharaoh dreamed that seven good kind came up out of the river, and seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. The lean and ill-favored kind ate up the first seven fat kind. Joseph told Pharaoh that the dream was one, God would send seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. The famine would consume the land and the plenty would be forgotten. Pharaoh should look at a discreet and wise man to oversee the land of Egypt, and should appoint officers to gather the food of the seven plenteous years and lay it up for storage against the seven years of famine. Pharaoh saw that Joseph had the Spirit of God and made him ruler over all Egypt. He took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and made him ride in his second chariot. Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt. He went throughout all the land of Egypt and gathered up all the food of the seven plenteous years and laid it up in the cities. Joseph had two sons before the years of famine came, and he called the firstborn Manasseh. The seven years of plenteousness were ended, and the seven years of dearth began, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Jacob told his sons to go to Egypt and buy corn, because the famine was so severe in all lands. Joseph's ten brethren went down to Egypt to buy corn, and the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. Joseph saw his brethren and made himself strange to them, and spake roughly to them. He said to them that they were spies and that they would be proved either by the life of Pharaoh or else they would be kept in prison. Joseph put them all together into ward three days, and then told them to bind one of their brothers in the house of their prison. They did so, and Joseph spoke to them by an interpreter, and then took Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Joseph commanded the men to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack. When one of the men opened his sack, he espied his money, and his heart failed him and they were afraid. The Lord of the land took the twelve sons of Jacob for spies, but when they told him they were true men, he let one of the sons go and took food for the famine of their households, and then let them traffic in the land. 
When the brothers emptied their sacks, they found bundles of money in them. Their father was afraid and said that they had bereaved him. Reuben's father said that if he didn't bring his brother with him, he would slay his two sons and bring down his gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. When they had eaten up the corn they brought out of Egypt, their father told them to go buy some food. Israel asked the people if they had another brother, and they answered according to the tenor of the words. The man said, Bring your brother down. Judah told Israel to send his lad with him so they could live and not die. If he didn't bring him to Israel, Judah would be blamed forever. Their father Israel told them to take the best fruits in the land, give a little balm, honey, spices, and myrrh, nuts, and almonds, and double money in their hands, and go again to the man. The men were afraid because their money was returned in their sacks at the first time. They came near the steward of Joseph's house and communed with him at the door of the house, and he said, Peace be to you, fear not, your God has given you treasure. The men came to Joseph's house, and he gave them water and asses provender. They bowed themselves to him, and he asked them about their father, and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, God be gracious unto you, my son. Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he entered into his chamber, wept there, washed his face, went out, and refrained himself, and said, Set on bread. The men marveled one at another, and Joseph took and sent messes unto them from before him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. Joseph said to his steward to follow after the men, and when he overtook them, he spoke to them these same words, and they said God forbid that their servants should do according to this thing. The men speedily took down their sacks and searched them, finding the cup in Benjamin's sack. Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, and fell before him on the ground. Joseph said that God forbid that he should do so, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. Judah came near to Pharaoh and begged him to let his servant speak a word in his ears, but Pharaoh's anger burned against Judah's servant and he did not let his servant's youngest brother come down with him. We cannot go down, unless our youngest brother is with us, because we may not see the man's face, except our youngest brother is with us. If we take this also from my wife, and mischief befalls him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Let the lad go up with his brethren, so that he does not see the evil that shall come on his father. Joseph wept aloud before all those that stood by him, and made himself known to his brethren. They could not answer him, because they were troubled at his presence. Joseph told his brethren not to be angry with themselves because God had sent him before them to preserve life. The famine has been in the land for two years, but God has sent a prophet to save the people. Joseph told his father to come down to the land of Goshen and dwell there with his family, because there are five years of famine coming, and God would nourish them there. Joseph's brethren came to Pharaoh's house, and he told them to take their beasts and go to the land of Canaan, and bring their father in households, and come to him, and he would give them the good of the land of Egypt. The children of Israel left Egypt with wagons and provisions, and Joseph gave them all changes of raiment except Benjamin, who received three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. Joseph was still alive and governor over all the land of Egypt, and Israel's father Jacob revived when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him. Israel offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said to Jacob to go down into Egypt and make a great nation. Jacob brought his cattle and goods to Egypt, and his sons, daughters, and sons' daughters' sons brought them with him. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt were threescore and six, and the sons of Joseph were two souls. Joseph presented himself to Israel his father, and he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Joseph went to Pharaoh and told him that his brethren and father's house were in the land of Canaan and had brought their flocks and herds. Pharaoh will ask you what your occupation is, and you will say that you have been raising cattle since you were young. Joseph told Pharaoh that his father and brethren were in the land of Goshen, and that they had no pasture for their flocks in the land of Canaan. Pharaoh let them stay in the land of Goshen. 
Joseph's father and brothers were sent to Goshen by Pharaoh, who made them rulers over his cattle. Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. Jacob blessed Pharaoh and said that his life had been few and evil compared to the life of his fathers. Joseph gave them bread in exchange for their cattle, and fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When the first year was over, the people came to Pharaoh and said they would sell their land and be his servants. Pharaoh agreed and gave them seeds so they could live and not die. Pharaoh removed the people to different cities, but did not buy the land of the priests. Joseph bought the people and their land for Pharaoh, and they were to sow the land and give the fifth part to Pharaoh and four parts to themselves for seed, food, and their little ones. Israel's time to die drew near, and he called his son Joseph, who promised to deal kindly with him and not bury him in Egypt. Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head and Joseph came to see his father. Jacob was blessed by God and told to multiply and give this land to his seed after him for an everlasting possession. Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in Egypt before I came to you into Egypt, are mine, they shall be mine. The eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. Joseph brought his children near him and kissed them and embraced them. Joseph blessed the lads, and said that his name would be on them, and that they would grow into a multitude. Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you, and bring you again to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above thy brethren. Simeon and Levi are brethren, but their anger is fierce, and their wrath is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Zebulun's eyes will be red with wine and his teeth white with milk because he washed his garments in wine and the blood of grapes.